In this video, I'll show you a unique approach and how I was able to create very attractive animations using Bean Create, GIMP, and Inkscape. There are a few online services that offer basic character animations, and we all have seen some of these over and over again in many of the presentations on YouTube. How many times have you wished that you could have just a bit of animation in your videos other than the ever-present panning and transitions built into every video editor? There are canned videos that you can find in almost every video. Wash, rinse, and repeat. Only those peoples or companies with mega budgets can afford to employ professional animators or are themselves animation pros. They invest hours, if not days and weeks, in making very exciting and attractive animations. Wouldn't it be nice just to have a few animations that add a bit of sparkle into your presentations? I'm going to show you how anybody can create simple and effective animations for a total cost of zero and a small investment in time. Here are the steps. Introducing Bean Create to create a basic cartoon image that we can animate using GIMP and Inkscape. First, we need to decide on what kind of image that will lend itself to being animated. And what does this mean? You need to think about what you can animate arms, legs, mouth, but you need also to think about what you can manage to get from being image based on the text prompt you submit. In my case, I wanted to have three kids waving. Before I got this idea, I was simply putting still images that I created with being create and using the video effects to move them. You can see this technique in all my videos. So I set about searching the internet thinking somebody must have done something like this as an AI service. Unfortunately, what I found was most of the services just use AI to match canned videos to your text. Then you had a big job of sorting them out. I was not impressed. The other options, as I mentioned earlier, were animations based on characters already created with their prompts and a timeline where you had to either select pre-planned movements or to build out movements of your own. I had used them before and wasn't very happy with the results. Since my videos have to do with the multi-application platform, as I, I use images only to break up the monotony of showing an application again and again, and like to throw in somewhat related images and a bit of humor sometimes. Back to the process. Using my kids waving examples, here's what I did. I downloaded the image that I made from Bean Create and uploaded it into GIMP. I then used the Select by Color under the Select menu, inverted the selection, removed the color ID in the corner put by Bing, then added the white areas inside the image, which would become transparent places if you don't want. You can learn more about this technique in a video tutorial link down below. I then did an edit and cut instead of doing a paste from clipboard and save to disk. I just hopped over to Inkscape and did a control V and pasted the image onto the canvas. In this way, I saved a lot of time and benefit from the clipboard holding the PNG image for me. Next, I used the poly spline tool to map out the areas that I wanted to animate, which in my case are arms, because I want the kids to wave. The best technique is to make a node on each extremity and internal part and where the fingers are to put a node on each side. As you will see, by using the node tool in this manner, you can quickly trace the parts you want to animate in the least amount of time. Inkscape has an object clip function that lets you create masks and clip parts of an image that you want to copy and use. We're going to use this to isolate the arms that we want to animate and also remove them from the main image. First we trace out all of the parts we want to automate. We copy both the image and the trace and use the paste in place. That gives us a copy of both the trace and the main image. We then use clip object set clip which will give us the part we want to animate. We put that aside and repeat the same process. We can now remove any extra traces and start the next procedure, which is to remove the parts we want to animate from the main image. In our case, those will be the arms. We trace around the arms, but only need to care about the part that touches the main image. After creating all the traces, we use the path union to combine them into one object. We then create a large object that covers the whole image and subtract our parts from that. We do that by moving the parts to the top of the big square and use the path difference which will cut out those areas. We then select the image in the mask we created making sure the mask is on the top and the image is on the bottom. You can use the order icons to change their positions if need be. We then perform an object clip set clip. Now we have the kids without arms, but don't worry, we're going to give them back their arms and animate them. 
We do a little cosmetics to fix the boy in the orange striped shirt so that when we pivot his arm, there isn't a blank space. We copy some of his shirt as an object and then modify it so that when we rotate, it looks natural. When we do this, we have to group the separate parts together so that when we move them, we move them as one. To make the arms rotate in the right way, we click on the arm and move the rotation center point to where the shoulder joint would be. In this way, when we click to get the rotation handles, we can rotate the arms bit by bit as if they were shoulder joints, sort of like you would do for a stop action animation. Now we need to make the background square and put the base image of the three kids in the middle such that when we rotate the arms, they don't go outside the square. The reason why we do this is because the animation will shift and jitter because one of the image sizes will be different. We are now ready to create, in my case, 15 images by rotating each arm just a bit, saving and repeating the process. The more images you have, the smoother your motion will be, if your movements are very little. You go down as low as 5 images, which would still give you a nice animation, but I used 15 because I lost track of where I was. For your images, it is important that you use the same name followed by a sequence number, in my case, 1 to 15. The reason that you want to make sure is you need to keep the right sequence in order not to get them mixed up. Once the images are all created, there are two techniques you can use to create an animation. The first technique is to use a video editor. Load the images and copy paste them in a single timeline. Make sure each image is the same length. Then select all the images and create a composite video from them. If your video editor does not support this, then you can render the video to disk and upload it again for further processing. For the composite video or reloaded rendered video, you can then retime to create the speed you want your animation to move. Copy paste that portion as many times as you want to create the required length of the animation. The second method is to use GIMP. From inside GIMP, click open as layers from the disk and copy all of your images. They'll be loaded as individual layers. Then do an export putting the name and GIF as a file type. And then when prompted, select one from per layer, replace Otherwise, your images will be on top of each other. You want each image to appear, then be replaced by the other. This process will create a GIF image, which you can import into your video production, giving you a nice little animation. Sometimes a little animation goes a long ways. Okay, this is it. Please subscribe and help me continue in this open source journey by subscribing. Or if you're really wanting to join with me on this journey, consider a little financial support to help keep me alive. <laughs>